Well, welcome everybody. My name is Mary Hyatt, and for those of you who maybe don't know me, I am a life coach, an entrepreneur, and a presidential diamond with doTERRA essential oils. And every single week, you can find me here talking about self-discovery, talking about authenticity, vulnerability, and ultimately coming to a place where you love your body, you love where you are in life, and you begin to really take control of creating something that makes you feel fully alive. So welcome. If you're here for the first time, I'm just honored and grateful that you are here. And today is a very special day. I cannot wait to introduce you to my dear friend, Emily, but let's first start the show. said today I have a very special guest with me somebody who I just admire the hell out of she is somebody who is just full of life and I love reading her posts on Instagram I love following her because she is somebody who shares the same passion that I do for using your voice for showing up authentically for showing up with just sort of a vulnerable spirit. Emily is a life coach and what I love about her mission and her vision is that she really specializes in helping women reclaim their authentic essence, who you really are to your core, so that they have the courage, the confidence, the clarity to create and live fiercely authentic lives. You guys know how much I value that authenticity and Emily demonstrates this all the time. And she she really shows women like how to embrace freedom, I think in a really cool way where you know who you are, you love who you are. And she actually just launched her very first online course um, with Be Fly Academy called Where Her Life Is Her Art, which is so cool. This is a really awesome course. I'll have her talk more about it later. But it helps to kind of bring her teachings into the world in an easy to follow step-by-step -step formula so that women can truly become the artist of their own lives. How beautiful is that? So welcome, Emily. I'm so glad to have you on the show. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you. Can't oh. wait until see what we're going to talk about today. Oh my gosh. Well, like I said, you are one of my favorite people. And guys, audience, as you're watching, make sure that you comment, you give us some mm. likes, you give us some hearts so that we know that this is resonating with you. And I've got my phone up so we can absolutely answer questions along the way. But Emily, for people who don't know you, who maybe it's their first time seeing you, tell us a little bit about how you got to be where you are now. Um, well, it's a in-depth story, so I'm just going to start at the beginning. So I did what everyone does, you know, for most people, the masses do in life. You kind of go to college, you get a degree, you move up in your professional field, you know, you buy a nice car, you live in a fancy apartment. And, you know, I did everything that I was supposed to or that, that I thought I was supposed to. And I was unhappy. I was just screaming from the inside. You know, my life looked kind of perfect on the outside, but inside I was just like, there has to be something more. Something's missing. And um, this period of my life was, it really sucked. You know, I felt really alone. I felt like I was crazy. I felt like no one understood. I just, I didn't understand how I could do everything that I was told that I was supposed to do in life and that I was still unhappy. So with this realization, you know, I kind of started on a path of self-discovery and just started doing little things to make changes, you know, started working with a life coach. And, and at this time, too, I was really unhappy in my job. You know, I like worked my butt off to become an interior designer. And I was just like, at the end of the day, I was like, I am so unhappy. Mm. You know, it's so interesting, I think, in 
anyone's journey that I talk to that has been through this work, there has been that one moment that they say to themselves, there's got to be more to life than this. Did you feel like at that moment that you knew what to do to sort of get out of that funk or you knew what to do to begin this discovery process or take me through that? How did you start kind of getting yourself out of it? So I had no idea. I I really, I remember the moment that I knew something needed to change. I was like, looking out the window in my soul sucking job. And I just remember thinking like something has to give, like the, there has to be more than this. And you know, when I slowly started doing things, I, I had no idea what to do. Nobody understood what I was going through. Like I felt really, really alone and we'll talk about it more, but that's when like the sisterhood now, and that's why I just like really want to be here for other people is because I felt so alone, but I didn't know what to do. I started going to kind of workshops. I started going to yoga. And I remember the first yoga class I ever took, like I felt like a peace within, which is something I had never felt in my entire life. Like I felt this like kind of groundedness and I was like, Ooh, what's this? Like, I want more of this, you know, and I, I started slowly making changes, but, um, nothing. So my big breaking moment was that I just reached a point where it was a breaking point. I just was like, something has to give in such a big way and I'm not going to find what I'm looking for at home. So I, yeah, go ahead. No, I'm just wondering like in that moment and people are saying on the chat that they can totally relate to that feeling. Were you scared? Like, was it any part of this where you were like, shit, I don't know what this is going to look like. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I was terrified and something to note too, this wasn't something that happened over a period of six months for me. This was over a period of years. Like I think I really started to kind of feel unhappy about when I was 27 and I didn't take radical action until I was three. Yeah. It was, yeah, a good chunk of time before. I think that's so true that you, you begin with that stirring And there's a certain piece of courage that sort of has to line up with like the right timing where you go, okay, I'm ready to actually do what I've been feeling for, for a while. When did you kind of first discover the idea of authenticity? Like, was that an aha concept for you? So well, to take it back a little bit. So like the courage moment that I had that I was like, something has to give. Like I literally, I remember coming home from work on a Friday, I was sitting on the couch crying to my mom, just saying, I am so unhappy. And she's like, what do you need to do? And I was like, I need to quit my job and go to Bali. And she was like, I do not understand it, but I support you. And I literally went upstairs and bought a one-way ticket to Bali. I walked into my job on Monday and quit. And then my last day of work was that Friday and I left. Oh my gosh. Like that is... That is some courage. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, yeah. Whoa. That, that's, you know, it's so funny. I have felt like Bali has been calling me for some time now. It just, there's something really magical about that, that place. And I just think there's certain, certain places have different energy, you know, yes. and I think I haven't been to Bali, but my experience with what people have told me is that the energy there is just palpable and is really conducive for diving deep and discovering yeah who you really are. Did you experience that there? Yes, absolutely. And, you know, people would ask, like, why did you choose Bali? And it was just like this little whisper that was like, come to me, come to me. And I listened to it, you know, and um, I, yeah, I spent pretty much, I think four months, I was there for four months and I spent four months on my own, you know, healthy living, going to cafes every day, yoga every day, meeting people, and really just finding myself. Like really, mm-hmm. and as cliche, not, as cliche as that sounds, like I really just spent this time getting to know who I was because I didn't have any idea who I was. You know, yeah. none whatsoever. And you know, I journaled for probably about two hours a day, just like, mm-hmm. you know, and just really did the work. And you know, somewhere amongst those beautiful rice patties, patties, I found myself. Like I wow. really did. And you know, during like the three year period before I went to Bali, like I had dyed my hair dark brown at some point, right? Like, is that if that was going to bring me happiness? And I remember looking in the mirror, and I didn't know who I was. Like, I just was like, who am I? I had no idea. And when I was in Bali, like all that went away. Like I just wow. knew who I was. And and I think it was important for me to kind of get away by myself. So there was no influence, nobody telling me who I should be, 
how I should live my life, all of that, you know, it's just me. You know, what's so interesting about that experience is you, you talk about kind of coming home to yourself, like you, yes. you easily found yourself. So, I, I mean, obviously you work with a lot of clients. You look, you work with women who were sort of in this waking up process, as yes. do I with my coaching clients. But I'm curious, like, why do you think we have forgotten who we are? Like, where did, where did we lose that along the way? Like, what are you finding with your clients that sort of... <sighs> The, the, the tipping point where you go, okay, that moment was the moment that you lost yourself and let's work at getting it back. But why do we keep forgetting who we are? Well, I don't know if there's kind of a moment or if it's just a lifetime, you know, and it's like, I love the quote by Daniel Laporte that says, like, can you remember who you were before the world told you who you should be? Right. Mm -hmm. So I think that everywhere we look from the time that we're little, like this is who you should be. No, I want to be an artist. No, you can't be an artist. You can't make money doing that. You know, and it's there's these things that we're told from when we're very little of what we can do, who we can be or who we can't be. And, you know, and I think that social media, I don't think helps in any way because you kind of yeah. kind of look at you kind of see things like, oh, I want that. They're doing that. I want that. And I just yeah, I just. There's so many ways you can lose yourself. I don't think there's like one answer of like, this is why people lose themselves. I think there's so many, but I think it's really keeping up with the Joneses and really thinking like we're supposed to live. This is the life. This life is you're supposed to live. Yeah, it's an expectation, living for the expectation of others. And, you know, it was so funny. I can't remember who said this quote, but something about how if you don't choose to live your life, somebody else will live it for you. Mm -hmm. And just that idea that if you aren't in the driver's seat for your life, everybody else's expectations of who they want you to be, they will be dictating how you show up, what that looks like, the decisions that you're making. And all of a sudden you wake up and you're like, like kind of like what you said about your own journey. Uh, there's got to be more than this. Like, how did I, how did I end up here? Yeah, and, absolutely. you know, I, I, I get a sense that there's this collective kind of energy that's happening mm -hmm. right now where people are starting to sort of wake up. And what do you feel like people are most hungry for? What do you think that they've been longing for that they haven't had? I think fulfillment. I think mm -hmm. people are really unfulfilled in life, you know, and there's, so they're wanting more happiness, more fulfillment, more passion, but they're finding it in ways that aren't really filling them up. You know, it's, it all comes from within. And so this is such an interesting thought. Okay. Like fulfillment, we've all heard this word. We're all for familiar with it. We all kind of, I think probably like see it as that elusive like thing yes. that we're supposed to get. It should be fulfilled, all of that. How would you describe fulfillment? Like how do you know in your core when you feel fulfilled? Um, well, I think it all comes back to really having a solid foundation and knowing who you are, because yeah. that like once you have that in place, that there's just this steadiness and groundedness that is there no matter what. So you do feel fulfilled no matter what else is going on in your life. Like things can be a mess in your life. But if you have this solid knowing of who you are and you're living from that place, I think that that is kind of where the fulfillment, happiness, whatever you want to call it, that's where it resides. Okay. I totally agree with that. And okay. Let's say somebody's just starting out on this journey for the yes. first time. And I know for my clients, like if I say, well, what do you want? Oftentimes they don't even know what they want. Like they're so disconnected yeah. from who they are that they don't even know where to begin this journey. So walk me through that process. I know your course kind of goes through some of this, um, but how do people figure out who they are? Like, how would you coach somebody through that? Well, and first, I think that just the beginning to ask, who am I? Like, what do I want? You know, you might not know the answer right away, but if you continue to kind of ask yourself these questions, you, you're going to get some answers. Um, but I think that kind of starting small, you know, so really when I'm working with one-on-one -on -one clients, the first um exercise I do. So it's a popular coaching exercise. It's just the wheel of life, right? Like it's so simple, but it's so powerful because you can kind of take a bird's eye view of your life. And it's just so and if people don't know what the wheel of life is, it's a circle and then there's pies and each pie represents a different area of your life. And, you know, I've created my own based on the clients that I work with, but just simple of where are you right now? 
where do you want to be? You know, like what would make that a 10 for you? Just like these really, you know, just simple questions. I love the idea of the wheel of life because I think one of the things that I hear you saying is curiosity. Like you have to get curious Mm -hmm. about where you are and where you want to want to be. And I think most of our lives, I know I was in this for so long. It was like, I numbed, I was numbing so hard that, you know, I had fallen asleep to my life that just even kind of getting to that point where I'm waking up and starting to get curious, like where, where am I, (laughs) Where, where am I in my life? Like, am I even happy? Am I even finding pleasure in what I'm doing? Do I do Am I doing what I want to be doing? Mm -hmm. Am I saying yes to things when I really mean no? And getting curious. And I love the idea of doing the wheel. And I think for anybody who is at home, I mean, you can totally, you know, draw out that wheel of life for yourself. You can put the, you know, I would say like, what are the most um, important categories of your life? Like what are the pieces to the pie and separate it for yourself? And then just kind of shade in you know, if, if you're shading it in all the way to the top of the edge of the circle, that's probably going to be a great indicator that you are feeling fulfilled in that area. And you'll kind of begin to see, okay, well, I'm feeling really great in my relationships or I'm feeling really crappy in my relationship to money or my body is at this place. And, you know, you can begin to kind of see where where is the deficit in in my life and kind of go go from there. Do you think that that would be just an easy I think journaling it's a exercise? Really, I think it's an easy journaling exercise and I have a copy. I could even I don't know if I can attach it to like yeah, the yeah, comments yeah, we can or something. It. But so we can post it. Um, but something it's just because it's simple, but it starts to get the curiosity process. It starts to ask, you know, like, okay, this is where I am right now. Okay. Now, where do I kind of want to be in this area? You know, and one of the things that I say with my clients and I was like, I want you to start thinking like dreaming big with no trees. So like if you have all, you have a really big dream, right? And maybe it's just to travel the world. That is your dream. But you have all these trees in the way and the trees are all the reasons why you can't do something. They're all of your excuses. So what would it look like if you were just, there were no trees? You know, so just dream big in that kind of state and just start. I love to just just be curious, just be curious, like start asking yourself who I am I or if you really if this all feels really overwhelming, then don't do any of it. Take out your journal and just start asking yourself some questions. Who am I? What do I really want out of life or just free flow and just have a conversation with yourself? Yeah, you know, what's interesting is that I did this exercise once where I started to journal out who I had been. Like if I were if I were to define myself or even how people would define me, I just wrote out, you know, who is Mary? Mary is a daughter. Mary is the time before I had gotten divorced. Mary is a wife. Mary is a yoga teacher. Mary is, you know, XYZ. And then I got even more, you know, um, microscopic in that definition. Mm. And then I kind of looked at that and I and I said to myself, okay, what part of this feels true and what part of this feels like a mask? Mm. And that was really helpful. So I was able to circle like the parts of myself that felt really core to who I was. And then the second part of the exercise was now write out who I truly am Mm. without like, kind of like what you were saying without the tree, without the filter, without the judgment, just who, who am I really like, who do I know myself to be and start from that place? Absolutely. And one of the things too, is I think that when you start to ask yourself, who am I? One of the things that comes up is like all these titles, you know? So for me, for a long time, when I said, who am I? It was an interior designer. That's not who I am. That wasn't who I was, you know? So it's like, we give ourselves titles to, you know, say, this is who I am, but like deeper than that, like what makes you happy when you really think of the times in your life that you've made have made you happy and yeah if you completely took off all those masks that we've created over the years like when all of those are gone who are you at your core which feels really scary sometimes because you take off all the masks i know for myself that was my armor that was what allowed me to function in the world so the idea of taking off the mask was like oh my god then what's left because not only am i not connected with who I am truly, I 
am afraid that if I should bring that to the world, if I, if I show up as who I am, as my true self, I'm not guaranteed that that's going to give me love, affection, acceptance, and it feels really risky. And I, I had this uh, quote from Brene Brown, and I, she says um, something like, vulnerability sounds like truth and feels like courage. And she says something like, uh, uh, truth, truth and courage um, aren't always comfortable, but they're never weakness. And I love that quote, but I think that the fear sometimes is that if I show up as my true authentic self, I risk rejection. So what would you say to somebody who has the fear that who they truly are on the inside wouldn't be accepted or loved? Um, well, first, it's terrifying. And I still have that fear all the time. Yeah. You know, I mean, and I think that's maybe one of the reasons that I'm so crazy passionate about helping people live from their truth is because it's something that I struggle with, you know, like it is, is scary. Um, but you just have to find a way to have the courage to do so, you yeah. know, and I know that that's probably not the best advice, but you just have to do it because the like alternative is just wearing the mask to not being happy to following other people's dreams to yeah. you know a life of unfulfillment so just having the courage but then also maybe getting a support system in place that the people that are going to be like okay we've got your back you can show up as the real true raw authentic you and we're still going to love you and if yeah. there's people in your life that are judging you or that you feel like you can't show up a hundred percent as your true self Get them out of your life. They don't belong in your life. Yeah, it's so true. And I think that there inevitably are going to be people there that need you to be a certain version of yourself. Oh, absolutely. And that doesn't feel great either, you know, because no. now all of a sudden you're responsible. You put yourself responsible for somebody else's happiness. And it's just that's an icky feeling when you start kind of taking those masks off. You're like, I can't I can't do this anymore. I can't yeah. play that version of myself, which, okay. So this brings me to another topic, which I have been dying to talk to you about because we okay. actually haven't talked about this yet. Um, but you were telling me about your course and you were explaining to me that there is a module that where you talk about sisterhood mm, and I know yes. how important sisterhood is to you. And I feel like it is for me as well. I haven't really explored that as a concept per se, but I have some incredible women in my life who we just do life with the, the good, the bad, the ugly, the really, really ugly. <laughs> um, <laughs> but that hasn't always been the case for me. I think that, um, you know, well, well, before I get to that, let me ask you this. Why, why do you think that sisterhood, or maybe you can explain what you mean by sisterhood and why do you feel like that's so uh, important for this self-discovery process? So when I say sisterhood, it's just a tribe of those like women that have just got your back no matter what. And it could be from women like you're you're one of my sisters. You know, I met you on never met you in person. I've met you on Instagram and I just love the shit out of you. Yeah. You know, so it's like it can be on social media. It can be in person. It could be just this tribe of people that you feel supported by, but people that are probably on a similar journey. Because if people aren't on a similar journey, they just don't understand. And no matter how much they love you and respect you and support you, if they're not on a similar journey, it just, they don't get it fully. So totally. that's just, that's kind of what I mean by kind of really creating a sisterhood. And, you know, one of the reasons it's so incredibly important to me is because like, I just felt so alone on my journey. And, you know, I think that this journey of self-discovery, like you have to shed many layers of who you're not. You have to let go of so much. And I let go of pretty much all my friends, Yeah, like all my party friends that I used to hang out with in the city, you know, like, I don't see or hang out with any of them anymore, you know, and I just kind of felt really alone. And I was like, there was no one to support me. So and I don't want people to have to go through this alone, because it is hard. It is scary. It is overwhelming. Yeah. No. Well, and I think that I had to do the same thing. I think that you do have to come into alignment with the people that are surrounding you. They have mm -hmm. to sort of match up with where you're going. So I think that this is probably really core to a lot of women because we are taught as women to sort of hate each other, to compare yeah. ourselves to each other. And there's sort of this underlying rule that you're supposed to be in competition with other women. I know, obviously, you know, my 
story now, I talk a lot about the body yeah. and I joke that women don't get ready for other men. They get ready for other women. <laughs> you know, it's like if you were to be at a all girls weekend, yeah. you're still, you're not going to be like just hanging out without your makeup on and your bra and pajama pants. You're going to be fully done probably more than you would even if you were at home and you're doing the selfies and it's this whole thing, which <laughs> just drives me kind of crazy. So how do you find those authentic people, other women, and mm -hmm. how do you invite them into an authentic relationship with you? Well, I think, so I, I love Instagram and I love Instagram for the connection of, you know, meeting sisters and kind of building this sisterhood. So if, you know, you're on Instagram, you love it, like start seeing like if people's messages like are really resonating with you or you're like, wow, like what you were saying before I came on about like, you know, it was just like, you felt like, yeah, it was your sister. Yeah, totally. You know, like reach out to them, send them a message like, hey, like found, found you. Like, I really love your vibe, you know, ask questions, get curious with them. And the people that respond are going to be the people that you're going to want to be like, okay, you can come into my life, you know? And if you're, for me too, I crave in-person connection. And it's the reason I do a lot of my coaching in person because I yeah. think that there's this disconnect nowadays. So, you know, like going to places that you think that people might be similar, like go to those places, go to events, go to workshops, put yourself out there. You know, you have to really start putting yourself out there. And, um, you know, it might happen. You might just meet really one really good friend. Okay, and then another. And it's really yeah. about quality over quantity you don't need a huge tribe you just need the people that are really gonna like love and support you no matter what oh totally well i know in my life when i was really hungry for that and felt really lonely for female yeah. friends i i had to to lead like i realized that that wasn't necessarily just going to come to me that i actually had to lead it mm. and so i knew of a couple girls who I thought would sort of be into this, this idea, not really knowing if they were going to be or not. But I invited, I think, four people. I created what I called at the time, this was a few years ago, an authenticity group. When, it. like, authenticity for me was, like, such an amazing word. Like, nobody was using it. I just thought, oh, my God, how, how incredible is this concept? And so I was like, the authenticity group. And so I invited four girls who I kind of knew. And then I asked for them. I explained kind of what the group was about. And then I asked them to bring a friend. And so I think it ended up being like maybe seven of us or eight of us all together. And it was just so beautiful. And these are the people that I now have this incredible like sexuality group with. Um, they ended up being my core sisters from this original authenticity group. But we went through Brene Brown's Daring Greatly book together. And so it's sort of like this hybrid book club authenticity group where we were willing to talk about some of the hard stuff. And now we talk about way more than we did at the beginning. We've, we've earned each other's trust enough to now we really, really get into the, to the big stuff. Mm -hmm. But I had to lead by example that I was willing to be vulnerable, that yes. I was willing to create a sisterhood and demonstrate that. And I'm so glad that I did because I think if I was trying to just find that randomly, that would have been really frustrating for me. And as an introvert, I'm not yeah. super outgoing. Like I don't, I don't enjoy talking to strangers at a coffee shop or like that's <laughs> kind of my worst nightmare. So yeah. the idea of facilitating it for myself ended up being like the perfect, the perfect way to do it. Yes. Really well, cool. and, and I love that too. And I love the introvert person piece too, because I'm a huge introvert. So it's not, it is hard to put yourself out there. Um, but so just doing like taking those little steps, you know, creating a group, reaching out to a few people and being like, Hey, let's do this. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. It's so cool. Well, okay. So let me ask you this kind of switching gears again, back to the self-discovery process. What do you feel like is the, has been the most important lesson that you've learned through this self-discovery journey? I think it's really having the courage to let go of who you're not. Like shed, like I talked a little bit about before, like shedding those kind of layers because you have to shed a lot of layers. And mm -hmm. I don't think this self-discovery process, it's never ends. It's like new right. level, new level. Like, 
you're going to have to keep working at it, but you're going to have to just be devoted to it, to have the courage to continue to show up, to shed the layers of everything that you are not, that you're not. Yeah. I, I love that. And it's true. I mean, it's layer after layer after layer and just yeah. releasing and accepting who you are versus yeah. having to be everything. And that was, that's a big thing for me. Like, yeah, there's a lot of things that I'm not. Yes. And I have now made peace with that and I really value who I am, but I had to, I had to let go of yeah. a lot of that really that was coming from external expectations from other people. Ultimately. And I think that the acceptance piece is huge too. You know, you're really falling in love with who you really are. Like just, yeah. yeah. You know, it was so funny. I went, um, I spent through my divorce. I spent a month in Florida. Um, Mm -hmm. when I first got separated because I needed that space, I needed to get away. And it was like an 11 hour drive. And I drove down with my assistant and she got me all settled and we had a great car ride down there. But then on the way home, I had to drive home Mm -hmm. by myself 11 hours. And I was sharing with some friends that lived there. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm really dreading this trip. What am I going to do alone in the car for 11 hours? Like you can only listen to so many podcasts, you know, (laughs) and I will never forget what my friend Jeannie Hendricks said to me. She said, are you kidding me? She goes, I would love to be in the car with you for 11 hours. Mm. You know, she goes, you get to be with yourself for 11 hours. You get to, you know, have the conversation with yourself for 11 hours. She said, I can't think of anything better than I would rather do is to be with yourself, you know? And I was just like, oh my gosh. Like, I love that idea of just going like, right. I get to be with somebody who's really freaking awesome a, you know, AKA myself, yeah. <laughs> but like I had to learn how to believe that, that like 11 hours with myself was actually a delight versus yeah. boring. And if I stayed in the place where I thought 11 hours with myself was going to be dreadful, that was a very clear indicator that I had some work to do with myself, yeah. that I wasn't fully loving myself yet. Um, and I really enjoyed that ride home. It was great. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I love that piece about the like really starting to just love spending time on your own because I think it is so important. And, you know, if um, people just start doing that, just start spending a little time on your own here and there, like be okay by yourself. Turn off your phone. Don't listen to music. Go in nature and spend time by yourself. You know, like it's so important and you know and i think that when i started my journey like i don't think i ever spent time alone now i spend so much time alone like i have to spend time alone gosh me too isn't that crazy like i i mean most people never spend alone time with themselves it's scary because i think we're afraid of our own thoughts you know what are we really thinking and that just goes back to if you take the pressure off and you just stay curious Mm -hmm. and you don't have to judge it it's just like oh i wonder what i'm thinking today i wonder what's coming up for me today and really holding it with kind of that open hand of Mm -hmm. acceptance um absolutely okay all right guys so sorry about that apparently i had some construction outside that completely cut off my (laughs) wi-fi internet so i am actually now connected on my phone and we're gonna do this the old school way (laughs) Slice it in and pop it up later. So I was just getting into asking one of my final questions with Emily, which was, what do you want, Emily, what do you want to make sure that you never forget? So I want to make sure that I never forget that, um, that I believe true freedom really lies in knowing who I am. Like that is where I'm going to find freedom, the freedom that I so crave. <laughs> I love that. And okay. Yeah. Cause I remember I was asking you, so what does freedom mm-hmm. look like to you now? Um, freedom is to me, it's a feeling and it's just a feeling of embracing where I am and being okay where I am in life, just as I am with nothing needs to change, just accepting and loving myself and my life just as it is. I mean, how freaking beautiful is that? It's hard though. (laughs) It is. It is. I'm obviously like in that same journey as well. And especially with my body, like getting to the place where I really just love myself and my body for what it is without it having to change without me and my skill set or me and my strengths or whatever, having Mm -hmm. to change that who I am right now is enough. And that that person, my essence is lovable. Exactly. 
Yeah. Oh my gosh. That is a journey. That is a journey. So is there anything else that you, before you kind of share about like what's coming up for you, what's going on next, is there anything else that you feel like you want to share with everybody about this journey or just any little nuggets of wisdom? You know, like I know that this journey is hard and scary and can feel overwhelming, but I want you to know like that you're not alone, that there are so many people that are on a similar journey and you just got to find them so they can be on the journey with you. Cause it's yeah. so much easier when you've got some people by your side. So true. And I think the illusion yeah. is that we're all alone. The illusion yeah. is that we're having to do all of this by ourselves. And one of the things that my boyfriend says to me all the time, he's like, you're not alone. Yeah. You know, you're not alone. And that by itself, it's like to be alone in some ways is kind of a choice. I think, Mm -hmm. you know, like there are plenty of people. I mean, you just go on Instagram and hashtag self-discovery or hashtag authenticity. You're going to find people who are on this journey who have been walking it for some time. And Mm -hmm. there's just, there's people, even if they're virtual people, there's people that are going through this who will make you feel like a normal not crazy person. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's, you know, and that's it. And you're not crazy. If you're going through this journey and you feel absolutely insane, you're not crazy. Something yeah. just needs to change in your life. It's time for something, you know, let your hair down. Like I saw some, one of the women on the comments said, I, like, I have a hard time letting your hair, my hair down. Just let it down. Do yeah. the change, do what you need to do. It's time. Yeah, it is totally time. I love it that. And it's, yeah. And that, that little voice, just will keep knocking and it will keep knocking and it will get louder and it will get louder until you simply can't ignore it anymore unless you are really, you know, going crazy to numb it and to quiet it. But ultimately, you know, when we're living in any awake state, we can't ignore it forever. Um, No, you can't. And it is going to, it's going to get louder every day. It's going to become a scream unless you decide to numb it with like booze, alcohol, or, you know, a toxic lifestyle. Like it's going to be there until you listen to it and dive into what's going on. Yeah. And, and it's so worth it. Like what you get on the other end, like you said, it's freedom. It's being at peace with who you are versus always being at war with who you are. And I just think that the gift of that, like to live fully alive, which is what you and I are all about is so worth it. I mean, it is the shit with the champagne, (laughs) you know, but it's worth it. Like I'll take that champagne, you know, Oh, totally. (laughs) it's great. I mean, and it's living life in 3d and you know, with that, you get to experience a range of emotions, all the good, all the bad, all the beautiful. Um, but it's, yeah, it's great. And I just so appreciate you and your voice you. and what you are doing to help further this, this along for other women and to inspire them and give them just that courage yeah. to do it. And I hope that everybody will go find Emily because she is such a ray of light. She is I mean, I don't, even before we talked on the phone, I'm just your photos, your pictures on your website. I was like, Oh my God, this woman is just radiant. You were just so beautiful. And it drew me to you. I had to know who you were and that's magnetic. And I just, you know, thank you for showing up for yourself because it's such a gift to the rest of us. Mm. Um, so tell me, Emily, what's next for you and where can people find you? So next for me is really showing up in a big way with the work that I'm doing in the world, you know, like really, you know, I am a bit of an introvert, so it feels scary. So really showing up bigger and really spreading my message and changing people's lives, you know, in a big, big way. Girl, I get it. Yeah. And the best place to find me really is Instagram. It's where I spend, you know, most of my time. I love it. Come over there, connect with me, introduce yourself so I could follow you back and know that you're not in this alone. Yes. Yeah, absolutely follow her. Her page is beautiful. All of your imagery is just, mm-hmm. I don't know. It's like, I wanted to say mouthwatering, but whatever the equivalent of that for your, <laughs> for your eyes is eyewatering. <laughs> it's, just, it's such a treat. I mean, just visually, aesthetically, so beautiful. So mm-hmm. thank Emily, you. thank you for being with us today, despite mm-hmm. all the crazy technological difficulties and just going with it and sharing your light and your wisdom with everybody. You're just such a gift. Thank you. 
Thank you for having me. I just have loved it so much. We should do this more often. We should. <laughs> we totally should. Well, thank you to everybody who is watching the recording. So grateful that you hopped on with us to, to learn more about Emily. And of course, I will be back next week on my Facebook Live show, Wednesdays at 1 o'clock Central Time. And as I always say, the purpose of life is to be grateful, to be great, and to be full. Thanks, guys. Bye.